Um, welcome to the fourth and final FIVB Beach Volleyball World Tour stop in Brazil in 2016, before the Rio Olympics. And what better place to stop off than the vibrant cultural and northeastern coastal city of Fortaleza. Hello and welcome to the fourth and final FIVB Beach Volleyball World Tour stop in Brazil in 2016 before the Rio Olympics. And what better place to stop off than the vibrant cultural and northeastern coastal city of Fortaleza. Yes, hello and welcome to the Fortaleza Open. It's semi-final time here in the capital of the Brazilian state of Sierra. And after stops in Maceo, Rio and Vitoria, it is the wonderful popular beach city's turn to hold an FIVB beach volleyball event for the first time since 2007. And this is the first semi-final that we have for you today on Saturday. Erdmann and Matti Sick, the Germans, will take on the Chilean brothers of Grimalt. Esteban Grimalt and Marco Grimalt, and there you go, a bit of Chilean support as well in the crowd. Of course, the majority of fans here are Brazilian, as you can tell by all the yellow shirts. But the Chileans will no doubt get it. plenty of South American support. This is the, uh, the weather conditions for today. Pretty warm it has been, safe to say, 29 degrees. But the big story really is the wind. It's been 18 kilometers an hour. And had this uh, arena not been fairly well enclosed, then it would have been very, very gusty, as you can see there from the flags flying at the top of that stand, which is pretty packed. It should be a fabulous atmosphere for this semi-final. And it's a great opportunity for all semi-finalists, incidentally. All looking to win their first ever World Tour event as we take a look at the match officials, Mario Ferro and Giselle. Amantino, Brazilian pair will look after this one. But yeah, what an opportunity. This uh, draw here in Fortaleza was loaded. But after plenty of twists and turns, I've been left with four pairs who have all never claimed an FIVB World Tour title. But it is the six seeds against the seventh seeds in this one. There is the MC getting the crowd ready. He's got some voice, hasn't he, on him? And on goes Marco Grimalt, who is the slightly older of the two brothers, 26 years of age. Esteban Grimalt, 25. They played together since uh, 2011, the Chilean team. They've been second twice, but not since 2014. They reached the final on the world tour. Can they do so today? And this is who they are taking on. There is Jonathan Erdman. Six foot four inch, 28 year old. Plenty of experience to his name. 81 tournaments he's played on the World Tour. And his partner, Kay Matsik. Looks a pretty cool customer, doesn't he? He's been there and done it as well on a number of occasions. 35 years of age, 95 tournaments to his name. And they've been third three times before, have the Germans on the World Tour, but never made a final. They reached the, uh, well, they picked up the bronze in both, in Moscow, the Grand Slam last year, picked up the bronze in Shanghai in 2014, 
and the bronze in the World Championships in Poland in 2013. That probably their standout performance. Can they make the final here in Fortaleza? Tough one to call this one. Which way it will go? It's Herdman and Matiak who lead the head-to-head 3-1. -head but it will be good enough to get us underway. And it's a good start by the Germans who side out. Yeah, incidentally, it's the Germans who lead the uh, the head-to-head -head series 3-1. But significantly, it was the Chilean team who won their last meeting, which came this year in Maceo. A pool match. It was a long one, though. Went to the distance, all three sets, 52 minutes. Let's really pick up a, another point. I just wonder whether that... A little bit more experience, though, will count in such a big match for the Germans. It'll be uh, Matsik to serve again. Floats one down the middle. High set, which is then spiked down the middle. On that occasion by Esteban. I'm going to call them by their first names. That's decent accuracy and fine power as well. Certainly no team of male brothers have ever won a uh, FIVB tournament in Brazil. It's been going since 1987, so it's a real opportunity to create some history for the Chilean brothers. Get hands to that one, Marco, but wasn't able to get the block he wanted. And floated down the middle. Nice set. Esteban is blocked, and that's a super block too from Erdman. He's the slightly taller player out of the two Germans, Erdman. He tends to be the one who has to get up at the front. Of course, uh, Fortaleza, incidentally, is Portuguese for Fortress. Whose defence is going to be breached the least today? That's the question. Hard hit into the corner on that occasion by Esteban. A long list of uh, family members who've played not just beach volleyball but volleyball. Another Monica Fuster was uh, on the national volleyball team in Chile for the uh, Grimalt brothers. She was known as being one of the best as well. To another rally. That's superbly saved, or is it? Can't direct it, Marco. They also had uncles, uh, Ricardo and Rodrigo, who played beach volleyball. Talked about them being an inspiration to them both. But it's a, it's a well-known name in Chile, the Grimalt name, when it comes to volleyball. Again, it's been an excellent start by Germany. They've pinched a couple of points. And they've got the early momentum as they go up 6-2. High ball right into the centre. It was meant for Marco. But easy pickings really for someone of Erdman's talent to just rise up and steal the point. Matsik and uh, the man to go hard down the middle. It's well received though by Esteban. Marco now. Matsik does some good defensive work at the back of the court. And then an excellent block by Erdman. And what a start by the Germans. They can do no wrong right now. It's a terrific point defensively. Kept alive at the back by Matsik. And then Erdman with the block. Right at the front of the court. And right now they're finding the uh, Chilean team fairly easy to read. It's a bit of a quiet. goes the Germans way. Terrific swerving serve by Metiak. Move dipping down as well right in between the Chileans. And again, Erdman's there to pounce just to dip it into the sand. That's it, goes big. Esteban underneath it. Esteban now to look to find the open space. 
but can't and pushes it well wide. An extraordinary start. Match that I thought was going to be pretty close. Anything but right now. Pressure, of course, on both teams. They're not all that experienced in playing semi-finals on in World Tour events. Looking a little uncomfortable, you have to say, the Grimault brothers. Struggling to pick up Maciek's turf. Don't have to pick it up on that occasion as he overcooks it out the back of the court. Just a third point for the Chileans. Marco to serve. Sent one down the middle. That's a lovely, just tipped it over the top of the blocker. Down the line. They look composed. Look like they've been in this position for a fair long while. They uh, had a good performance in Poland in Olsten at the back end of 2015 where they finished fourth in that Grand Slam event. And clearly picked up some confidence from there. In terms of 2016, they've actually only played two events together, the Germans. They were 17th in Rio at the Grand Slam and 25th in at the Messier Open. To play the last two. That was uh, Erdman who played with Petsian in Fuzhou and Fuchs in Vic Victoria after an injury to Masiek. They're back together right now and forming a formidable partnership. Help off the net. Erdman applauding himself, and he may well do that. At the moment, everything that they hit is finding its way into the court. Big net court, but carries it onto the line, and no chance for the Chileans. There's Esteban. Uh, for once, the Germans weren't on the same wavelength. Left a big space down the line. That's easy pickings for Esteban. In fact, it was Marco, I beg your pardon. And it's now Marco to serve. And dips down low. A little bit of a misread from Erdman. Take nothing away from the serve from Marco Grimault. Good angle, wasn't it, from the cameraman to show you just how much and how quickly that dived down towards the sand. Again, this time though, it is Matsik underneath it. Matsik again. That's brilliantly done. We're just looping over the blocker. Such awareness from Matsik. Just took it slightly later, didn't he, on the spike? Allowed him to get the arch for it to go up and down and land inside the baseline. But the serve doesn't land inside the baseline from Erdman. A little better from the Chileans. You feel that they've just settled into this match a little. Stop the rot. Important. You feel though, with the scoreline the way it is, it's a long way back for them in this set. Running jump of a, a serve. But again, it's dealt with by the Germans, and they find the court again. That's a super spike. Just does not look like missing. Said it already. Number of times in commentary. Lovely angle on the hit. Which is the line. Well, usually it's party time here in Fortaleza, but the crowd at the moment stunned into a bit of silence. This will get a far more noisy when the Brazilians take to the court in the second semi final. Knuckles used by Matsik. Just overcooked it. Pushes it wide. As we hit the uh, technical timeout, it is Germany who lead 13-8. Court maintenance. In terms of how both of these teams have reached this position, well, the Germans lost their second pool match to Oscar and Andre, who are, of course, in the second semi-final. 
Así que bueno, por segundo le saquemos. En uno de los chilenos. Que se lavan nosotros. They have won every match so far, including beating both Evandro and Pedro. Top seeds from Brazil, real shot that one, and they beat them comfortably, 21-12, 21-18. It was in the last 16 encounter before they knocked out the Israelis in the quarters. So they should be brimming with confidence. After a slow start, they've worked their way into it. Game restarted, and that's a powerful spike from Erdman, knifing the ball down the middle and splitting the two Chileans. Plenty of height on the jump, and then he just unleashed on the ball. And again, he's there with the block as Erdman. He's dominating this game. Well, you have to say, maybe a little too predictable from the Chileans. Erdman knew exactly where they were going to go, what they were going to do. The set may be slightly too close to the net. Credit to Erdman, though, to get the super block. Esteban into the corner, and it is right into the corner. shake of the head from Esteban as he went to collect the ball. They know that it's been a, a slow and sloppy start. Nothing slow and sloppy about that hit, though. Just catching the line. Erdman now. Just guiding it down the line. He was able to get a hand to it, but can only just push it wide. It's a good side out for the Germans. Seven point cushion in this opening set of this first semi final. Incidentally, it is Oscar and Andre against Virgin. And uh, the Mexican team in the second semi final. There's a dual event, incidentally, there's uh, women here as well. First semi final will follow this one. Can't back up that first serve with another. That's it. Into the net. But they've been a deadly duo, haven't they? Masik and his serve, and Erdman and his defensive capabilities at the net blocking. Oh, you know, their communication isn't too strong there. Eventually, though, they sort it out for Matsik to go down the line. And fires it down the line. Didn't have much margin to work with there. But found the winner. They'll just to sort themselves out. Again, going wide. Shows how much of an influence in the last couple of years indoor volleyball has had on beach volleyball. Teams tend to play with real width these days. Not all down the middle. It's a huge spike. It lands just long. Almost recovered by Matsik. Power, though, too hot to handle on that occasion. Mr. Bans turn to serve next. Just waiting. Run and hit. It's a good serve as well. Matsik underneath it. Now it's Matsik who goes up, slaps it down. And it's a fine winner. I haven't seen too many rallies in this contest so far. Germany happy to keep the point short. Bit of tactics you can always see from Erdman and Matsik. As you can from all beach volleyball players. Not sure what that one meant. But it's worked for Germany because they have the chance here to steal the point. Although that's going to drift wide. Set wasn't the best from Erdman and Matsik. Had too much to do there. Ooh. 
Tig again, lovely cushioned dig. Receiving it brilliantly off the fingertips that time of Marco, and it drifts out. Another side out for Germany. I'm not sure whether it's felt like that for you, but for me, this opening set has absolutely flown by. In next to no time. Erdman looking to close it out, set point. It's another block in. It does fall onto the Chilean side, but they have the chance to finish the point this time. It ricochets off the top of the net and then goes out, and that completes a, a rather disappointing set for the Chileans. They take nothing away from the six-seeded Germans. They have won this opening set by 21 points to 12. There you go. The aces, one apiece. In terms of attacks, that's one-way traffic, 14 to just five in the Germans' favour. Three block kills as well for Germany. A very dominant performance from Erdmann and Matsik. As I say, not too many long rallies either. Do you just feel the Chileans came back into it a little more, particularly in the middle part of that set, but really they were blown away at times at the start and at the end of it to really get themselves going in any form. You just feel a block kill at some point or winning a dramatic point, they will get their tails up, but they've looked a little down really since the start. Look at some highlights from the opening set. Incidentally, this is uh, Erdman's Seventh FIVB World Tour Final, four, three bronze medals to his name. Kay, incidentally, is uh, playing his eighth FIVB World Tour semi-final with four bronze medals to his name, but so seeking to reach their first ever final. Going about it in the right way at the moment. They don't seem to be bothered or affected by the pressure either. I say that though, but I remember in uh, Olsen, they're in a winning position their semi-final and did get a little tight. It was a dramatic semi-final loss. And so the Chileans know that if they can just hang on in there and put the previous set behind them, then who knows, strange things can happen. And momentum is a funny thing in sport, particularly in a sport like beach volleyball. It doesn't take much time for momentum to shift. on the horizon. Both of these teams desperate to try and gain an Olympic spot. The, the Germans are five places off the final Olympic place. It's beautifully done by the Chileans. Meanwhile, the, uh, the Grimault brothers are four places off an Olympic spot. So this is big news for both of these teams. So much riding on it. Time running out to book a spot in Rio as Matsik wins the duel at the net. It feels like that at the moment for Chile that everything is dropping back onto their side. That's it. <laughs> Just like that, really. Right on cue. Just as I say, everything going against Chile. It's a horrible net cord that bobbles over. Hands on the sand. Rubbing sand into the wound, you could say. They're like a really well oiled team. The German side of Matzik and Erdmann. No curse of the commentator on that occasion as Matsik serves into the net. He's really been going for his serves in this match. So it's the Germans who lead 4-3 as they change ends. Of course, it's important for them to change ends. Maybe seven points. More so here in Fortaleza because the wind has been incredibly gusty, but down there on court.
court level. It doesn't affect the play as much as you might think if you're walking on the beach today in Fortaleza. Huge gusts of sand. They lie down on the beach. They love their wind sports here. A little wind surfing. Kite surfing. Right now, though, our focus is on this beach volleyball encounter. It's a tight second set as Matsik goes big. Great defense on that occasion by Esteban. Matsik again, they're looking to finish it off. Esteban gets a hand to it. Now he has time to try and pick the Germans off. Defend it into the open court, and that is the best rally of the match so far by some distance. But like so many others in the match so far, it's won by the Germans. Such awareness, so alert to where the space was. Matsik steals the point. It's a great diving effort from Matsik. Not enough, Esteban's angled spike too hot to handle. Esteban then to serve again. Goes big. People have been going out the back. Erdman taking no chances and now trying to get the spike away. But this time it's Marco Grimalt with the block. First block I think I can remember that the Chileans have got in. Is this a momentum changer? Read where Erdman was going to go. And a determined look on the face of the 25 year old. Esteban to serve again. Erdman underneath it. Erdman, oh, that's brilliantly done. Purposeful miss hit from the six foot four inch German. Such disguise on the spike. Look at this one. The variation of the German's attacks at the moment is just confusing the Chilean team. I don't know which way to block, where to go. The Chileans come from an angled position. And the power is enough to win the point. Nice wide position here. And you can go up the line, you can use the angle. Of time as well as a high set. Esteban with a lot of time to wind up and really go for it on that spike. Erdman. It's brilliantly kept alive. Bit of dummying at the net. Still going. Again, it's a block. It's going to be a scrap here, and the point goes to Chile. It was a little scrappy from the German team. The defense, though. The Grimault brothers a lot better in this second set. They need to get a read on what the Germans are doing. Marco, those serves into the net and then uh, apologizes. Fortaleza are not desperate to see a Brazilian team. They had plenty in the last 16, but only one left now in the semis. But they'll be enjoying this one. Tighter cat encounter. Matsik serve is too good yet again. Esteban wheeling away in frustration. Just couldn't receive it. Be saved either by Marco despite the dive. So points all. Another excellent serve, but that's far better from Esteban in terms of how he was able to get there. But it's another block from Erdman. It's so difficult for the Chilean team because they feel like they're on the back foot almost from the get go because of Matsik's serve. And then they've got the giant Erdman to try and get past at the net.
come from the angle. Go down the line though. Forceful spike enough to side out. Nine all. Far more competitive set this one than the first. try and hit the winner, but it's well deflected at the net, and then well, the little dip and dink that Marco was going for under here. I think it was the right shot open to him here, rather than setting up his teammate. He may well have been able to get there, but there was space. Just hasn't been able to execute enough. Marco Grimalt. There we go, then it'll be Erdman again to serve. Well, pretty horribly wrong. Ten points apiece. He's going to be ahead as we uh, draw closer to the technical timeout. Open underneath it, Matsyuk. High set down the middle. <laughs> Cleverly put into the corner by Erdman. And it is the Germans who take the slenderest of leads as they go for the sit down, 11-10. Finished at ninth of the Olympic Games in London in 2012. Did Jonathan McKay. to maybe go a little better in Rio, but they have to try and get there. It's not about momentum, and you feel if they win here, themselves a good chance of getting into those 17 spots that are available. Both of these nations aren't blessed with too much beach volleyball talent, so they don't have to worry about being a third team or anything like that. Of course, these two brothers have worked their way through the continental competitions up to world tour level. We've talked a lot in the past about building confidence and feeling that you belong at the highest level of the sport. We've certainly showed that this week here in Fortaleza, the Chilean brothers. But they've frozen a little in this semi final, although they are right in it in this second set. It's easy playing with your brother. My set up goes Marco. It's a fiery spike. It's a high set. Erdman was in the right place. Both hands on it though to deflect it down. Esteban with the running serve again. Nice jump serve from him. The uh, German scampering around, a reverse set hit. Good spike as well, but this is an excellent point. Isn't quite going to be kept alive. Haven't seen too many rallies in this encounter. And a rarity. The Chileans had half a chance there just to pinch the point on serve. Good reverse set. Matsyuk was in the right place at the right time. And the Germans, as they have done on a number of occasions today, able to turn defence into attack in quick fire fashion. Erdman down the middle, creating confusion between the Chilean brothers. Got to do some work here. They just about sort themselves out, the Chileans. Now Matsyuk looking to finish the point off. That one's going to drop just wide. Germans seem a little more confident than I think uh, many. Shaking ahead on this occasion by Esteban. Body language hasn't been the best on the Chilean team since that rather ugly start to the contest. An open serve. 
surprisingly, is sloppily received out of the court by uh, Esteban. And the Germans are just beginning to edge away. There wasn't too much speed on it. Maybe the fact it was down the middle, a bit of confusion by the two brothers. Have to be assured and confident. Really go to the ball when you're receiving. Any hesitation and it can result in what we just saw. It was better though from the seventh seeds. Marco floating it down the middle and that was uh, well, not what Metzik was expecting. Yeah, error from him. Yeah, ended up almost shoulder height. Took a step forward. This is where uh, the servers are clever. It can be deceptive watching it on TV, but how much the ball floats or dips or swerves. It's about getting your positioning spot on. Watching the world's best, they tend to usually always get this positioning spot on. Diving dig by Matsiek to keep this point going. And then into the net from the German. Three points in a row for Chile. They are fighting in this semi-final, no doubt about that. It's 14 all. I do feel if they can pinch this second set, then they will really be in the ascendancy. I just felt the match was going to get beyond them when they went 14-11 down, but not now. Talked about the fact that Matsik and Erdman did just struggle a little when they saw the finish line in their previous semi-final in Olsen. Back end of 2015. Maybe lingering in the back of their heads as Masiek makes another error. Nerves getting the better of the Germans as they call a timeout. They played so well for so long in this semi-final. Erdman and Masiek Showing that they're human and showing that they also weren't out feeling the pressure. Plenty to discuss. This is going to be the situation you feel in the semi finals here. Four pairs that are in the semis, none of them have won a World Tour title before, so it's going to mean so much to them. May well see some long semi final matches, you feel, and may well be a long final too because there's so much riding on it for the pairs. They haven't been there and done it too often before. That's where the pressure really can come into it, and where freezing when you see the finish line can often happen. Can the Chileans take advantage of the uh, Germans just losing the momentum? They lead now in this second set, and that still at sixes and sevens are the Germans. Masiek with another error. Even though he's the most experienced player on the court, doesn't matter what experience you've had, you can still feel the nerves. Masiek this time underneath it. Can he finish it off though? No, he can't. Not yet. Chance for Chileans to steal the point. Brilliantly. I was going to say brilliantly kept alive, but it isn't. And Chile win yet another point. It's five in a row. In fact, make that six in a row. 14-11 down to 17-14 up. In truth, they haven't had to do too much for that either. The Germans have almost beaten themselves. Erdmann. That's it. Will this make him fit a little better? Still can't get it away. The Chileans now beginning to read what the Germans are doing. And that's a super angled little knuckle nudge from Esteban Grimalt. And it's 18-14 now. Hands on heads from the Germans. Excellent dig initially from Esteban and then kept his cool here. In fact, I'm not sure he did use his knuckles. A half hit. Disguise on the spike with the palm. Open hand stuff, and Chile at the moment are just getting blocks to everything. Erdman now, that's better, knifes it down, and finally the run is over for the Germans. Hence the celebration from Erdman. That 
was clinical. Sick. And with the serve, little nick off the net, and that helps out the Chilean team. Another nick off the net, and this time Esteban. As he goes down the line, that's where the space was. And they edge towards taking us to a decider. Something I didn't think I was going to be saying all of about 10 minutes or so ago. Thought this one could be tight. Didn't look that way for a while. It's uh, Chile in the driving seat, although Masic, you just feel if he can find his game. He's been the danger man on serve, though, but he wasn't able to hold serve. So hold serve will pick up some points on his own serve last time, so it will be Erdman to serve next. Great to see so many youngsters in. It's been a Saturday night, we have school tomorrow. Big spike. Erdman can get a hand to it, but eno enough. Set point. They're pretty happy about it. Mashik and Sir ensures that this set continues. wonder where he went the crucial part of this set Although it's going to be very difficult for the Germans just to gather themselves again having been in such a winning position Masic to serve Esteban underneath it Isn't the best of receptions it's very tight to the net but it doesn't matter Esteban able to finish it off with a delightful spike on the angle and we are heading for a decided Chile Level things up. They take the second set, 21-17. Chilean flag flying proudly. So we have a coin toss here by uh, Mario Ferro. Decide who's going to serve first, of course, uh, deciding sets up to 15, up to 21. We take a look at the stats from that second set. In fact, it's not from the second set, it's from the, the match altogether. Plenty of opponents from the Chileans, but they were able to get themselves going a little more with the attacks. But as you can see there, well, even though the Chileans are losing almost in all the stat areas, it's when those errors came. The Germans were clinical, doing very little wrong, and then suddenly made about five or six errors in a row from 14-11 up to go 18-14 down. That's all it takes at this level. Bit of a wobble for a few points in a row, and you can lose a set. Run it too chilly. But you feel they didn't have to do all that much for long periods in that second set. It was that real dip in form by the Germans that have allowed them to still be alive. They certainly started reading where the, the Germans were going on their attacks, defending better, making it tougher for the Germans, and that enabled them to apply the pressure. So it will be Masik to get this final and deciding set underway. It's uh, an easy side out for the Chileans, who have the momentum coming into this decider. Masik underneath it, Erdman. It's high and angled, but Masik Cleverly, just hitting it into the hands of Mario Jamalt. Erdman floating one in. It's a great little knuckle, but alert to it is Erdman, and he wins the, the point. Brilliant play. From the 28 year old. Ding dong battle right at the net. He was so alert and so quick to think it, to react to the first one. And gets there on the second and finds the corner. A 
Steps to bat. He's overcooked it. And now it's the Germans who have a little bit of a run. Three points in a row. Position this time does find the court. It's angled hit. It's the Terrific accuracy on that occasion. Mario, then. It's a tough one to deal with for Magic. Together, they're able to work things out. Magic going down the middle on that occasion with plenty of power too. Really can wind up for these spikes. <laughs> it's going to go well long. Maybe just a sign that Masic looking a little weary. The oldest player on the court. Apologising to his partner. A lot of success early in this match with his serve, did Masic. Two service faults in a row. Esteban, great block from Erdman. Chileans still have the opportunity to finish this point off. Masic can get a hand to it, but can't keep it alive. The composure shown there by Marco. Drama was happening all around him, just to dink the ball over. Use the knuckles. Got it spot on. It's not always easy just to play the knuckle. Masic, Erdman, big hit, big winner. It's been a quality third set so far, both teams pretty clinical. The German two are able just to put that three-point run together right at the start of it. That is the difference. They've certainly raised their game again after that dip towards the back end of the second set. Good hard serve. Chance here for Erdman to try and get a block. It's kept up by Masik. Masik now trying to find the line, but he's put it just wide. Almost looked like he was in tears on the floor. Yeah. The older German knows that that was a chance. Didn't miss by much. And they get back level, the Chileans. Esteban come up with on serve. Good block, diving, dig though from Erdman. And that's terrific play. Unbelievable, really, from Jonathan Erdman. Chileans were almost celebrating to getting the first block in. But again, the reaction to it from Erdman was just out of this world. And he was able to finish it off as well. Nice and close to the net, and that means he can spike it into the sand. And it's beginning to feel like a long way back now for the Chileans. 8 5 the score. And they are giving it absolutely everything. Certainly an interesting celebration, considering there's still plenty of beach volleyball to be played in this deciding set. Erdman. Crunching hit that is just wide. And they extend their lead further, the Germans. 9-5. 
certainly feel really that this third set has been won rather than lost. Germans have been able to raise their game. Chileans haven't really made too many mistakes, haven't done too much wrong. Despite that previous miss. That's more like it from Esteban. Wound up into the corner. Need a few more like that. Floated down the line. Matic is underneath it, and then Erdman's there. Spiking into the corner yet again. So it was well received. It meant that they could go with two hits or three. Open chose to get the point done early. Erdman setting it up for Maciek. Cleverly done. Saw where the space was. Chileans were scampering all over the place in that rally. It's almost angling across his body. Got the dink perfectly right. And it's the Germans who look comfortable right now in the third set. But as I've said before, they can freeze and they can get a little nervous with the end in sight. It's certainly in sight for them now. As the Chilean brothers Discuss no doubt tactics and how they're going to try and turn this third set around. They don't have the bronze medal match tomorrow. But they want to be involved in the gold medal match. No doubt about that. Sort of position in the second set, remember, 14 11 up. Got more of a lead this time. Five point advantage, and of course, they're only four points away from winning the match. That, the four point advantage. This line hit by Marco. First three setter that the Chileans have been involved in this week. And it doesn't look like it's going to end well. Erdman again clinical on the hit. Twenty-eight-year-old then. As the Germans move closer. Esteban with the big hit, that's great from Masik. But it is Marco who wins the duel at the net. It's one of those, he's going to drop to either side. He's going to fall on the Chilean side and Marco able to get there. It was easier for him, of course, he could see the ball and where it was coming from, whereas Erdman, it was coming from behind his head, so he's always have to favour team who haven't hit the ball previously there. Oh, yeah, the line just doing well just to duck out of the way, because that was a knife and a dagger for Masiek. Two points away. See how hard this one was hit by the bounce that it took. Dick to keep the point alive, but the Germans should win it, and they do. Well, he missed that one in the second set, but not this time from Masiek. It's a great serve. Surely the Germans can't lose from here. Six match points.
Oh, and that's cruel to do it that way. Matic, well, you can see, is absolutely exhausted. But for the first time ever as a team, Erdman and Matic reached their first ever World Tour final. They have defeated the Grimault brothers in three dramatic sets. And they will fight for gold tomorrow here in Fortaleza. I have to say, they uh, were the better team. They froze a little toward the back end of the second set, but gathered themselves brilliantly after that, got their composure back, had their focus, and some brilliant serving from Masic, some excellent close net play from Erdman, ensures that they are the team who move through to tomorrow's final. Erdman and Matsik then winning in three sets. Here you go, the, uh, the stats. One more race, plenty more attacking winners. 11 more than the Chilean opponents and four less errors as well as the block kills, five to one. Almost probably be a little surprised that that one went the distance. Well, we're going to go over and uh, chat to them now with my, my friend uh, Jason Day, who's with the German victorious team. I'm just going to go over in a few moments time and see what they say. short moment in the second set there we get a little bit lost and they just go into it and we have to go to the through the third yeah. so really happy to win here and tomorrow to be in the final yeah well for, for a spectator's point of view I mean the, the crowd loved it and uh, and I just wish you all the best for the final tomorrow congratulations thank you see you tomorrow match tomorrow Jonathan Erdmann, who played a significant part as the Germans move past the Chileans. Well, we're going to show you uh, some highlights of that semi-final victory for the Germans just before we move on. It's uh, a terrific effort from them. It was Erdmann and Matsik who are through to the gold medal match tomorrow, and this is how they did it.